All right, so that's fine, but I wish I had known whether tails or heads. Now, granted, I'm assuming that's this, but we sometimes like to get verification that it was tails, and so thus the answer is. So let's add that to this. Now, part of the complication with this is we have let it define what the results were based on what they input here. So the result can't be just that. It has to be like this plus something else. So I'm going to do heads answer and tails answer. I'm going to change those variables because I'm going to then call this result one and result two and result one is going to actually equal let's put that right there and that right there this is going to equal the coin was heads so and then I'll do the same thing for result two the coin was tails so all right, so what this is going to do is this is going to be the result instead of just this. Now we still need to add on the rest of that variable. So let's try heads answer and let's add in tells answer. I don't think that's the best way of doing that, but let's see if that works. Let me reopen the terminal. I just wanted to close it just to clear out some of the data. It's a little getting a little crazy in there. So CD desktop Python 3, decide.py. All right, so let's say, is it going to rain today? Yes. No. Press enter. There we go. Now, I don't like that there's no space in between my string and the answer, and that's because I didn't put any space here. So if I add the space here and the space there, and I save it, let's see if that fixed the issue. Is it going to be a rainy day? Yes? No. That's better. I like that better. So there we go. We have a simple coin flip. Now if instead of a flip of the coin, let's say we were using a six-sided die, this would be six. Now the issue is, it wouldn't just be one or else, because we could also have if it was two, or if it was three, or if it was four, etc. And in that situation, this looks a little bit different. It's not just an if-else. Instead, it would be if, else, if, else, if, else. And instead, it would look like this. We would have elif coin results equals equals two and I guess this isn't a coin anymore it should say dice now but we'd have to change the variable name which you should do and that could be result two so this would be elif coin result equals equals three and we just keep doing this all the way down And keep in mind, we don't need a coin result equals equals six because that is the final else. So we don't ever need that last one. We just make sure that this says result six down here. Now, one of the issues is we don't have a result three or four or five or six because if you look at our results, we only have one and two. We don't have any others. So I would then have to add result three and four and five and six, etc. Now if I'm doing a 1d6, maybe I wouldn't have what each number represents. So that might instead just have the results with whatever the answer was. The die rolled low, so no. And maybe the die rolled high, so yes. And so maybe this would be like result six, and that'd be result one, and I could figure out what's in between, right? 
And I probably want to change coin result to be die result, in which case I'd need to change all of these. But you get the idea. So you could change this. It doesn't have to be a coin. It doesn't have to be one out of two. It could be one out of six. Or if you want to get some special die, it could be one out of four because there are four-sided die. Or it could be one out of 20. Or, you know, there's a lot of different shapes that you could use. Now, a really common similar thing to something like a coin flip would be like a magic eight ball. And so if we pull up the magic eight ball, we can see what that looks like. So if you're not familiar with the magic eight ball, it looks like an eight ball on the other side. There's a little window and you can ask a question, you shake it, and it's going to show you an answer. Now, if we just look it up, not that this is the best resource, but actually it tends to be pretty accurate. We can see here that actually the die inside of a Magic 8 Ball is a 20 answer die. And we can even see here what the standard responses are in your standard Magic 8 Ball. So 10 are positive, 5 are negative, and 5 are neutral. So if you ask a Magic 8 Ball, it's more likely to be yes than no. Hope yes is the best answer. Just out of statistics. So you can try making a magic eight ball following the same pattern and see if it works.